Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am Kyle Hilliard, here with Wes LeBlanc. Hey, how's it going? I'm also here with Alex Van Aken. Hey, I'm excited to talk about Pacific Drive today. One of my most yeah. anticipated games of uh, 2024. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So, the, yeah, this is, this is Pacific Drive. Uh, I am playing on PC. And to be clear, the game comes out, we were looking it up, it comes out February 22nd, and it's uh, PC and PS5. So it's one of those funky console exclusives. Um, and I, so I played, Alex, you, you played it at an event in the past, correct? Yeah, I played it at PAX East uh, for about a uh, half hour. I okay, really, I and really Wes, liked it. And Wes, you were like, at some point last year, you were sort of given a presentation on the game, right? Yeah, I didn't get to play it, but got to watch like an hour of gameplay and talk to the devs about it. Cool, yeah, and so I'm in sort of like a in between you guys, where I, I, I got a recent presentation on the game, and then I got to play, we had this, we have this preview build, and I, and I got to play from the beginning, as near as I can tell. And you're, you're never quite sure when you're given builds like this, like exactly where you're starting, so to speak. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like I played through the intro and got all the early tutorials. And then this is like an hour and a half in or something. Like, I'm on the first proper, I guess you could say, mission of the game. And it's it's a weird game. Like, it's it's almost, there's a certain degree of, like, strangeness to it. But I, but it's, I admire it for that reason, in that... The sort of premise is, like, you get stuck in Seattle, like, in the woods in Seattle, in this area of the United States that's, like, reality is shifting. Yeah. And, like, people can't get in or out, but somehow you made your way in, and now you're trying to survive. It, it's really strange. Yeah, it's called the Olympic Exclusion Zone, and it's, right. uh, like, a surreal reimagining of the Pacific Northwest is what the devs say um and like yeah. every time you so you have a garage that you go back to routinely and um and when you leave your garage the world changes i believe um mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah like a, reality shift and matter shifts like you can even see some of it as you're driving around like things are just kind of morphing and changing constantly yeah basically uh i mean that's the narrative reason mechanically it's a roguelite right yes yeah yeah, yeah. Which I haven't been able to dig into that part of it too much yet. You know, like doing like different runs and stuff. But this is kind of like the first mission. And this sort of the story conceit is like there are these people who can tell you're here. and Like they, they can speak to you, but you don't have the ability to speak to them. <laughs> Which is like such a, a video game conceit of like... No, your, your protagonist doesn't have a, a dialogue. Don't worry about it, because they, they, you literally can't talk to them. So they're just sort of, like, throwing weird instructions at you all the time of, like, you got to do this to survive. Like, right now, I am... There's this woman who's telling me I need to collect these, like, glowing orange globes and, like, insert them into my car. And when I do, it will create a gate uh, in which I can leave the area Yeah. Uh, to get back to my garage. Yeah, and as we, I, I, I'm not sure about your footage, but when I was playing the game, um, it, it, the storm, there's like a storm that gets worse and worse, and like fire starts surrounding you, the mm -hmm. lightning, uh, it, it gets very violent. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the storm is like almost, they didn't tell me sentient, but it acts as if it is. Like it, it actively wants you to fail. So it's like throwing things at you to, to get you back in a way. Yeah. And what's really cool is you can see right here, your door is actually called a crude door because um, it's, it's, it's not good. You can pull parts off of other cars and find parts out. I worked hard on this vehicle. I'm sorry, man. You know, do better. Uh, you can find parts throughout the world, whether on other vehicles or, you know, lying around at gas stations and slowly, like, you know, pimp your ride, as it were. Um and you know get a better car which is a really fun loop yeah I, I i was surprised at how manual the game is like you've probably noticed as you've watched me play like i'm putting the car in gear you know between park and drive like i it was funny the first time here i am like filling up the gas tank with like a little uh gas tank that i had um and uh i it was funny because the first time i got out of the car the car started rolling away 
you know? Yeah. And I like had to go sprint and like get back into it. And it's like, then I was like, okay, I got to get in the habit of putting this thing in park or else it's going to like drive away. And like, you actually have to manually do the ignition. And there are shortcut keys for like headlights and uh, windshield wipers, but you can even like look at your dashboard and like manually press those, those buttons and stuff like that, which, which is cool and makes it all very, uh, like it feels like a proper simulation. Yeah, to the like roguelike structure too. You're not, um, from what I can tell, you're not um, like upgrading your character or leveling up. Like the roguelike no. a progression happens through your car. So you're you're taking your car doors from crude to whatever the next step is, and and getting more gas and better tires and stuff, so you can go further out into the storm, um, which is really cool. It's a uh, I feel like car games don't like force you to do this much, which might be a turnoff for some people, but I don't know. It seems like a, an interesting take on driving games. Yeah, and I, and I mean, I'm I'm hesitant even to like call it like a driving game or a racing game. Like, it, yeah, it's definitely not a racing game. Well, no, yeah, it's certainly not a racing. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, a car but you game. do have to go high speeds, you know. Like yeah. you do, and but it's like it's more about it's almost like you know like like I don't know like Armored Core or something where it's like you're you're <laughs> trying to maintain this vehicle and change out the parts, and it's like the thing that you get inside of to keep you safe in this air in this world. So this is the Dark Souls of racing games. Oh God! Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, West the Blanc said that you can attribute that to him. <laughs> what, oh God! Um, yeah, I mean it is a it is a survival uh, or a crafting game, you know, where yeah, uh, you are. This is your base, right? I mean, you do have a garage that I imagine um, there will be some customizable elements. Uh, Wes, maybe you can speak to that. I'm not sure, but like the car is like your moving base. It's your it's it's your safe haven and you yeah. are uh you know continually upgrading it um like you would in you know uh, a rust or, or something like that right you want to constantly be improving your home base uh but the difference is yours is on wheels um mm -hmm. and i'm not sure west did you get to see much of the actual garage that you are um, you know, interfacing with in between runs. Yeah, it's um. I don't know if you. I don't know if customize is the right word. Like, I don't think you're making it like homey or yours, but you are like upgrading it and making your bench like, well, upgrade bench capable of producing better things. And there's like a machine okay. to put materials in that crafts and and shoots out other things for you. Um, and I'm not sure uh, if maybe it might be too early on for you to know, Kyle. But there, I think there's some customization with the car. I remember them saying like you can, I think, put, like, a little bobblehead or something in there, but I don't know if, like, you're you're changing the colors of the car and that kind of stuff. I distinctly remember the bobblehead from a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I would be really surprised if you weren't because, like, you're finding parts, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're you're swapping out parts and, like, it's 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 weird because it's, like, it's, it's this heightened thing. Like, you have this car, which is a, what is it called, you guys? Like, the type of car, it's a very Station familiar wagon? type of car. A station wagon mm. and uh and it and it feels like a real car and it feels like you're like you know i find a better door i'm going to swap in the better door but then you also have this like goop which i think i'll show later that like you can just like slather onto your hood to like fix your hood <laughs> and stuff like that i do that like all uh, the time yeah and I th and I saw so in that regard, like you'll find pieces and you'll sort of just keep those pieces uh, intact as long as you can. But I imagine, you know, for the most part, I bet it, it, you know people playing the game. It's a single player game. I bet everyone's car is going to look a little different by the end, just because everyone's going to find different parts and different things. You know? mm -hmm. How does controlling the car? You guys have both um, driven it. I have not. Um, it it looks a little slower, which makes sense given the type of game it is. But, like, is it still fun to drive the car since that's what you're mostly doing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is kind of... It's a chunky car, you know, mm -hmm. you could say. So it, it is, like, slow and... Uh, like, it, it feels realistic to steer, but I, I, I was enjoying it, if, yeah, if that so makes was sense, I. right? I, it's uh, yet to be... It allows you to be deliberate. Like, you can make, like, some pretty yes. tight turns... Um, mm. with it, but it definitely feels like, wow, like I am, oh, this thing is held together by duct tape and, you know, shoddy welding. Um, I also, one thing I was surprised by, which maybe I shouldn't have been because like, you know, any time that they've talked about this game or shown it off, 
like it has come across as scary. Um, yeah. It, it like as an intense game, but playing it, I was really surprised how tense I was getting as I was sort of leading up to the end, um, which you will see. I do I do make it out of here alive. Uh, to, to spoiler alert, um, but it's like because it has that sort of like you know Alan Wake Woods vibe and like storms are kicking up and there's like mm-hmm. these robots that I don't understand chasing me like it and it's a rogue like so it gets intense because you're worried about losing everything that you've sort of looted over the over the course of this this run you know yeah I, I remember something about the PNW that is inherently uh, eerie mm-hmm. uh, especially when it rains uh, yeah. and the light starts to go down beyond the trees and this game does a really good job capturing that atmosphere. The mannequins are pretty scary too. I didn't see those yeah, in my I in my preview, what that's so about. those might be new. Um, I They're saw. Everywhere, man. I think there was a run I watched there where they purposefully failed and like to show you how intense the storm gets when you're when it's about to like eat you alive basically. And there's like yeah. a lot of obstacles they throw at you. I'm looking at my preview I wrote, and there's like crawlers that create electric fences, dust bunnies that throw spikes at you. Um, abductors use magnets to drag your car around and the ground can just erupt with pillars and trees to stop you um i don't know if it's just like so different it's i it's i don't know it's rare that i see a game where i'm like i don't think i've ever seen anyone try to do this and um yeah same it's fascinating yeah i also i just like i was because i i kind of go back and forth with these kind of mechanics It, it depends on the game Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes I, I really don't like it to be so manual, right? Like, I, I want to just be able to, like, look at a map quickly. Um, but I appreciate that, like, in this game... See how intense this is? This is like... I was like, I'm just trying to... I want to get out of here alive. What are you doing? <laughs> it's uh, also... It's only but, first person, right? Like, you can't switch to yes. the, the more comfortable third person driving view. I think that no. makes it a little tougher and stressful, too. I hate driving in first person um, because yeah, of I do, that. too. And it's... It's funny because, like, you can see even now, I'm like, I'm really taking full advantage of it in a way that I wouldn't in a, you know, in a typical racing game. Where I'm like looking all the way to the left. I'm kind of keeping an eye on my map mm-hmm. as well. And um, I love how like there's those diegetic elements, like the map yeah. being like having to physically look at it. Really exactly, cool. Yes. And it, like, yeah, it takes your eyes off the road. That adds to you know the tenseness as well. Yeah, it's it's such a little thing, but even when you get out of the car, the the map will even kind of turn to the right, so you can look at it from the passenger side. So it's like you can sort of go and check. It's like, oh, do I do, like I, I don't have to get in the car to look at the map and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's really nice. It's um, I I, I certainly don't um, just make this call for any first person game because I don't think you know it, it it's not an instant fit. But this is one that I actually think I would be curious to see a, a VR sort of adaptation oh, of it. Yeah, not to that like sense. Yeah. yeah not to like get ahead of the game that's like it's not even out yet i don't want to like start making you know this is what i hope it is in the future because like yeah. i haven't even played the full game yet but as i was playing i was like the immersion of this game is like they're, they're really killing it like I, I could see this working really well in vr as well but um you know even uh in pancake mode here uh i i, I was having a good intense time yeah the uh uh the devs uh ironwood studios I think this is their uh, their first game. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really impressive. I mean, obviously they've all worked in other games, but you know, as a studio, it's just like such a feels like very uh, holistic and uh, and focused. Uh, yeah, in a really good way. Yeah, like they really they came up with something unique and, and intense here. Hey, you guys know that meme where uh, the joke is like a person says that every movie looks like boss baby because the only movie they've ever seen is boss baby (laughs) yes i i feel that way sometimes about myself when it comes to the game inside play dead's inside yeah um obviously i've played a bajillion games over the course of my life but so often like i'm like ah this kind of reminds me of inside like the most (laughs) (laughs) banal like nothing things like are like and and this is a game where like I got that same feeling. It's certainly in the beginning. I think it's yeah, just I think like it's the that setting. Opening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's also the the sort of wooded setting and even the art direction kind of like the. It's not super detailed. It's kind of like flat, um, flat colors and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, kind of more like. desaturated a bit. Yeah, and I think, but also just the weirdness and how I don't really understand what's happening, but am like really curious to keep going. 
Mm. That's like fair. makes like, me kind of think of inside in very, a way. Very you know? tense P and W. Like yeah, I could see that that comparison. Yeah. So, I kind of do the uh, same that, thing with that's a um, Stranger Things. If I, I I see red and I see like, oh, this is clearly not 2023, maybe earlier 80s <laughs> maybe or 90s, and I'm like, oh, things. is this Stranger Things inspired? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I can see that here too. Yeah. So by the way, here this is like me exiting. Like what you do is you gather up a bunch of stuff, you grab those globes, then you activate this like portal. Oh, this is cool. And you gotta sprint to it. Um, and it was very easy on this first run because it's just showing me the ropes. But um, I can imagine like you sort of having to sprint to the other side of the world uh, when that when that uh, pillar sort and of like erupts, narrowly you know? make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the storm and, is like a, this is it's like a battle royale esque storm too. Like it closes in on you so that any direction yeah. you're coming from, you want to be going towards that portal. And then this is like how it works. Like you get transported back in the garage. I made it back safely. Um, so yeah, I mean that specific drive, I I think we're all kind of enthused about. It. I mean, Alex, mm -hmm. you said it's like your most anticipated game. So I mean, you're yeah, certainly... I've said that several times. Um, yeah, I think as you know, more games have uh, been announced. It's like uh, maybe maybe not number one, but like top three most anticipated. Easy. Um, yeah, I can't. But I was yeah, I was I was very impressed uh, by getting some hands on here. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, um, out uh, February second yeah. or twenty second. Uh, mm -hmm. PS5, Steam, PC. Yeah. yeah, PC. Yeah. But yeah, thanks guys for uh, for checking out the game with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me on. See ya.